Uh, my, my name is Raja Jackson. I fight out of Long Beach, California, and I'm representing the U USA. I'm fighting Collins, and um, I think he's a very well-rounded opponent. Um, from what I saw, he, you know, uh, I respect him as an opponent. And uh, where I feel stronger, it's hard to say because uh, I just go wherever the fight goes, you know. I, do whatever I need to do in there. And I figure out as I go. I just see my hand getting raised, you know? It, it, like I said, it depends. It can it could be a submission, it could be knockout, it could be TKO. I don't, I, I don't know. That's why, I, that's why I love fighting because everything is so un unpredictable. Just gonna have, they just gonna have to tune in and see every My name is Steven Collins, fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, from the USA. Um, I'm very excited to go pro. Um, I, I think this is a very, very nice fight for me. I've been fighting tough opponents my whole career. So this is just another opponent in, in a way that I got to knock out. Um, I respect his dad, but he is not his dad. So I, I'm going to prove that this weekend. Um, I like being an underdog because people, people don't know my name, first of all, and people don't know what to expect out of me. They, they don't know my talent. So th this is a chance for me to show what, what I'm really about. I believe I can get my hand raised any way possible. Knockout, submission. Decision. So here we go, set for this feature about this lightweight contest that sees Quinton, Quinton Jackson's son, Raja Jackson, make his pro debut against Stephen Collins. Collins set and ready, taking this on short notice, but Frank, he is somebody that is ingrained in combat sports, in sports in general. He is a full-time strength and conditioning coach. He was actually preparing for a fight in July. So he says, I, I'm not coming on short notice. Actually, I've come in with two back-to-back -back camps. I have got better incrementally, in fact, in huge steps over the last few months. And we saw at the weigh-ins, he is in incredible yes. shape. Definitely, this is a guy. I mean, he, he makes his living off of being in the gym, being fit, being ready, and he's his own walking billboard as a fitness instructor. That's the advert, yeah, right? Yeah, you walk around, you see a guy, it's like, hey, you're gonna teach me how to get stronger, faster, leaner, and you got a big belly, it looks a little weird, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's hard. But Stephen Collins, so he lives and breathes that lifestyle, which enables him to have the, the ability to take opportunities like this, where, look, you're fighting a legend's son. You know, there's gonna be more recognition on this, more attention than fighting anybody else making their pro debut, uh, pro debut at any of the regular time. Most of the time, this doesn't really catch that much attention. This is a very big story of what Roger can possibly do in the MMA world. So Stephen Collins is looking to take over and, and steal some of that uh, uh, win. He also said to me he likes the fact that the eyes will be on Raja. He likes the fact that people, because of his surname, because of Raja's surname, will automatically put him as the underdog. And he said, I love that. Put me in that position every single time. Let people doubt me. Let people think they can beat me and let me prove yeah. people wrong. It's a great motivator, you know right? What? I think it's a lot of pressure taken off you when you're not expected to win. It is like when you're the underdog, it's like, well, then me going out there and having a war and etching out, I'm always going to really, I can only move up. When you're like expected to win and you're expected to run a guy over, that's the worst position to be in because it's like, look, I can have a close fight now with the guy. And all of a sudden it's like, it's like the after our party, people acting like you lost. Like, well, that's a lot closer I thought it should be. I'm like, damn, I, I won, man, relax. But that's just the pressure comes on you. So I agree with his outlook. It's better to be the underdog and go ahead and spoil the night. So one fighter inside the cage. Let's get set, let's get ready. Let's welcome his opponent, Raja Jackson. So here we go, you talk about pressure, you talk about weight, when you are carrying the legacy of your father, and you know a lot about this because you've got your children coming through sports in general, but combat sports in the, the form of Bellamere. And this is the clone, you see that, the chain coming out, you just did the, the scream into the sky. He's got so many fighting style habits in the cage that are so similar to his father. Yes, he's not a light heavyweight, he is a lightweight, but you look at the big slams, you look at the way he takes pressure, you look at his last performance where he absolutely dominated with his striking, yeah. intimidated the opponent and got the victory pretty much before his opponent stepped inside the cage. He is soaking up what it is to be Quinton Rampage Jackson, but he is emerging as his own man. It's such a tricky thing. He definitely has his dad genetics to see the power, his work ethic to come out here and drive upon it. But again, like, 
you know, that's actually a common thought for uh, you know, Robert Greene type philosophy. You don't want to follow in the footsteps of somebody who's already great. It's kind of like, let's make your own territory because it's hard to live in someone's shadow. It's a difficult path to take that I don't wish upon anybody. I see the struggles that my daughter's going to have. There are advantages that she has, that Raja has, being the child of another MMA legend. There are a lot of disadvantages too, where it's like, oh, you're not good enough. You didn't make it. You didn't, you know, the, the bar is put at a level that I'm trying to like, hey, it wasn't even that high to begin with, guys. Relax. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> let's all chill out and be more realistic. But that's the case <laughs> sometimes when you're in the shadow of somebody else, the comparisons, it adds so much more pressure with the opportunities it also gives. Taking the final checks now with Rampage Jackson. You'll see him just behind that, watching over his shoulder. Such pride he has in his son. His son has turned his life around through martial arts, through sports, through focus, through sacrifice. And now he is looking to carve his own legacy in mixed martial arts. Let's get this one underway. Let's hand it to Michael Vale. Let's get the action started. Our next bout is in the UFL lightweight division, scheduled for three five minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet eight inches tall, official weight. 155.8 pounds. He is making his pro debut here tonight. Fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, please welcome Stephen Collins. And now look, welcome his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet 11 inches tall, official weight, 155.3 pounds. He is also making his pro debut here tonight. From Lakewood, California, let's welcome Raja DeClone Jackson. Ryan Ruggerman. Set and ready, we look at the tail of the tape now between these two. It's actually the pro debut for both of these fighters. Four and two is the amateur record of Collins. Two of those are by finish. Height and reach on the side of Raja. Well, height on the side of Raja, reach slightly on the side of there of Stephen Collins. Let's get this one underway. Jackson in the red corner. Black and red shorts taking on Stephen Collins. Blue corner underway. Southpaw versus Orthodox Frank here. That jab going, Steve. Again, Raja comes out tense. Pushing forward. That left hand causes the guy in the victory's last fight. Success goes to it. Oh, he's dropped him. Wow, left hook. Stephen Collins looking to survive early here. Lots of power in this kid, right? Wow, what a little fireman's carry. You don't see that often. Oh, he's got his neck out there, Raja. Yeah. Right now, if Carl can get his head up, he might be able to take away that guillotine. Raja looks like he's gonna dump and go for a cross face, which is much more realistic, much more, uh... Oh, nice knee. And what recovery, though, from Stephen Collins, right? Because he got dropped, seriously, but to come in with that sit out that the fireman's yep. carry, the, the reactions. Good, nice, Stevie, nice! Oh, he snatched on that neck. He's trying to work his way under here. Stephen Collins trying to get a bite on the neck of Raja Jackson. And like I was holding the arm, sometimes when you just hold the head, yeah, it's a better choke but it's harder to control your opponent to get back out. Grabbing what I call like the front headlock, the guillotine with the arm in it, it gives you more control of your opponent. Yeah, his Collins got rocked again. That Raja has a lot of power naturally. I mean, look, I'm wrong with his dad. He's a powerful, powerful human family. Genetics are Genetics real, are right? emotional. Yeah. They help out, I've man. I've met Sorry. your children. I've yeah. met your children. And Raja shows that power there, but Collins showed that. That's a well-conditioned guy. Took a shot, rocked, and then instantly he has a guy jumping on top of him. He's able to fight back and turn it around and, and get back up. And this position, they're just testing each other's strength. They're also getting some nice shots off for him, both work in the midsection with the hands, with the knees. Well, I'm going to see if he tries to hit another fireman's because the way Collins is pushing forward, he wants Jackson to push hard back into him. If he does, then that fireman carry would work. Oh, swinging for the fences again. Does very well at staying attached to Raja, right? Good job of trying to get wrapped up again on the neck, holding the arm. Oh, that was. Oh, he sat through. 
Good yeah, awareness. The fragility, like the mistake he made was he sat down. You're pulling down. If you see the more successful attempts at a guillotine where you're going to jump guard, you jump up into the person. You lift your hips to them, wrap your legs around their waist, and then start applying the choke. Then you guys fall and hit the ground because of the gravity and the weight. But if you try to pull him down, it's so hard with the sweat to hold the guy's neck that way. Let's look at that head again. That head's there. This position as well. Oh, a nice left hook on the break there from Raja. That's good experience from Raja there. Good training. After that break, throw the jab. Relax the body. Throw the jab. But look at his posture, man. Kong's moving around too. His eyes are open. He has to worry about that straight left hand down the middle. He's already shown a lot of success for Raja. Oh, a step through as well. High hand, Steve. High hand. Both. Now you get on your punches, Steve. Despite this being a very grueling first round, they're breathing pretty well, Frank. Yeah. This is the kind of the fights it's hard for fans sometimes to go. They're getting tired. I'm like, they are both pushing. When they were in their 50 50 lockup, they're giving both bodies 100% force driving in. It doesn't look exciting, but guys, that's extremely fatiguing to wrestle. That hard and push him. Just neither guy was using a lot of trickery. He was kind of just driving hip to hip. Hey, I'm going to show I'm stronger than you. And it's a slow pace and it's fatiguing. You talk about fatigue, they're moving from three minute rounds, Frank, to five minute rounds. It is a huge difference, right? Not just as far as what happens in the fight, but even preparing for five minute rounds, three five minute rounds, it's, it's yeah. a different set of preparation. It's almost twice as long if you yeah. think about it, guys. It's almost double the time you used to being in there. You know what I mean? So you go out there and all of a sudden you go, okay, clack, clack. You're only halfway through now. And before it was, they were saying yeah. it was the end of the round. Body shots at the right, Steve. Body shot right just on the right he eye, just on the crack of the, the eye there of uh, Stephen Collins. His knees, though, he's finding a home for him, Frank. Yeah, doing a good job. Nice driving into the double under, see if he can do anything. Good head position. It's so hard, though, if you don't get to the side of someone to finish. You see guys lock this up all the time, the body lock. Unless you get your hips in in front of them and twist them down, basically, you can kind of block their hips with your hips against the cage. and throw them over your hip, or you gotta get to the side of them, you know? That's, but but very difficult when a person backs up against the cage really to finish it. We, we all go for it, the double underhooks does give opportunities to do things, but it's sometimes it's one of those things that's like, man, when we get here, it's not easy to finish. Looking at the end of this round and swing. Oh, nice, nice hook there from Stephen Collins at the end of the round. And Frank, let me jump you back to the start of round number one. That big shot that Rajah Jackson connected and dropped Stephen Collins with. The, the powers of recovery, the fitness it must take from Stephen Collins to be able to absorb that shot, react and come back and then finish strong at the end of that round as well. Yeah, that's something that, you know, there's things that you want as a coach. You never want it to happen to your fighter, but you know, it's one of those things once it does, you're happy, like, okay, now we know. You know, if you never take a big shot, you get dropped, we don't know how you're gonna recover. You don't really know there's that question mark over you. Now Stephen Collins knows, he goes, man, if I get hit with a hellacious shot that rocks me, I know what I'm gonna do. Boom, that was a phenomenal left hook. He was unconscious for a split second and recovered and came back and got up to his feet. Showed great heart and great, great fortitude. And here we see it again, the clinch work, the scrambles. A tenacious battle between these two, both looking to make and take their first steps into pro MMA with a victory. Round number two, here we go. You can see, you see that this side is in the corner for uh, Stephen Collins. And they think they can read Raja, they think he's tired. And again, I think. They might have thought that this Raja felt, or the team thought this was a late notice fight for uh, Stephen Collins. Collins said to me, I'm in the best shape I've been in a long time. Back to back camps, injury free. Uh, Raja, both guys actually. I mean, Collins showed that fireman's carry, which could be a weapon. I'm not a big fan of it in, in this sport because it puts you in a crucifix position. But. At least it's a weapon to off balance. Right now, both guys are just driving hard. It's almost like a sumo wrestling match going on in there, right? They're both driving hard into their hips, driving forward. Neither one's doing misdirection. Neither one's trying to twist the other guy off to make himself easier. There we see a snap down from Collins, which there's a technique that can help. It's like, all right, we're driving in, he's driving in. Let me take advantage of that off balance movement. So then the guy can't drive in as hard. He has to watch his balance. Great knees for head. Nice knees as well. Collins 
Wow, I don't know why he didn't go back to that. That was a great knee with the front headlock. Raja Jackson hates it well. Yeah, any kind of misdirection pull either guy throw, does right now, uh, the other guy's going to fall flat on his face. They're both driving so hard. This is, Raja needs to stop giving up that front headlock. He's taking deep breaths right now. Deep breaths. How do you separate from this? Because you kind of interlock. Right? Look at him still talking to his corner as well, Stephen Collins. <laughs> he's not even talking to his corner. He's talking to Rampage Jackson. Yeah, that's it. You got to be careful. There's showmanship during the fight, but there's also, you know, you got to be distracted. At the end of the day, you can be the, the most charismatic, entertaining guy in the world, but if you're getting knocked out, it's hard to sell tickets. I'll jump back to that question. What's the key to separate from this? Because you kind of interlock each other. Well, both guys are kind of doing the same thing. They're both driving in. At least Collins has a little bit of a snap down. He's not doing it very quickly in one burst, but he is. Oh, knees, big knees. But at least it shows a secondary attack. Right now, both guys are just primarily driving in, shoulder to shoulder, 50-50 lockup, pushing at each other with no misdirection, no level change. It's just, it's just I'm gonna move forward, you're gonna move forward, okay. Just saw Collins look back at his corner. He's so dialed into them. Again, that goes to your conditioning. When you get tired, your body starts shutting things down. You almost get tunnel vision. Your blood and your brain, like people go, like, what's going on? And it's not, you know, you do the dumbest things sometimes because your blood is just not, you're not oxygenated enough in the brain. So for his ability to be able to look back, listen to his corner, and, and respond, and, and, and that's a very impressive. Oh, now he's taking the back. He's taking the back. Wow. Big moment here for Collins. He's trying to lock this up. Oh, he's got that on the Raja fighting that top hand, Frank. Oh, if Raja can get his chin under the knee. Oh, but right now. Stephen Collins here is the If he can lean forward and shake him off, and he needs to make sure, Stephen needs to make sure he doesn't go in front of the armpit. See how he's doing a decent job of staying back. Good wrist control, he needs to put the arm on the side of the head. No, oh, they're trying to feed that round, that's tight. And Roger now by backing actually against Collins, against the cage, helps to alleviate some of the weight off of him holding him up. Oh, that could be under the chin, he's squeezing. Roger Jackson trying to feed that top hand, he's doing the right stuff, Frank. He's fighting the top hand, now, now he's trying to push the chin under. All he needs to do is add on shaking. If he were to lean like almost like headbutt the ground, drive his weight forward as he's pushing that elbow, he could shake Collins off of him. Right now, he's by staying back and up like that, he's actually helping Collins out. But great composure for yes. Roger Jackson, right? Those oh, are dangerous right. positions, pressure positions. He was right on the edge. And that's fatiguing to have your neck being squeezed on there, but for both guys. And then Roger giving up that front headlock is killing him in this fight. Right knee. Right knee, Stevie. Good, Stevie. Right knee. Right knee, Steve. This is definitely going to be what we call a gut check for both guys. Yeah, this is going deep. Right? Yeah. This is going deep. Both guys are feeling pain right now that they've never felt before. This is conditioning. Now they separate the crowd here like that in Legacy Park. Final seconds of round number two. Strong round for Stephen Collins, Frank. I, I think he evened up. I think whoever wins this third round is just winning the fight. Oh, there we go. There we go. A little stare down at each other at the end. There we go. Oh. I know who they For a minute, I thought they forgot maybe there's one more round. I'm like, hey, guys. No, they, they were just letting each other know we're still here. And let's look. Stephen Collins a fantastic, I mean, he's the one doing something different, right? That snap down, that he works yes. his way around to the back. He showcased more weapons right now tonight. He's had a little bit more versatility. But then Raja Jackson as well. Raja has gonna... power, but we gotta wonder how much power he still has. Very, you know, and these are positions very fatiguing. That's killing his lower back. Taking those knees to the body, being snapped down into those front headlocks. Great spin behind there for Collins, who took the back. This is very fatiguing for Roger to fight these things off. Even if they don't land, they're not winning the fight for Collins. They're scoring points, and they're draining the power from Roger Jackson, which is what his most dangerous attribute is. Third and final round here. 
Will it be the fairy tale debut for Quinton Rampage's son? Stephen Collins, he said, listen, I'm here to spoil the party. I know everybody will have their eyes across the cage. But it's all to play for now, Frank. Five minutes now, five minutes to see who can make their victorious debut. Oh, Rampage Jackson's son coming out swinging Great hard. Great sprawl, man. Roger's probably going to snap down and get into a front headlock. You see Collins did a good job. But what he did is he pulls his hand out from the underhook and reaches right over the top. There he goes. And that, again, look, the knees of the head, it's fatiguing and it's, you know, as long as you don't give up the, uh, the double leg. Now Roger Jackson got some space. Four minutes. Four minutes, four seconds to work here. Wow. That was a... That jab showed the Roger has some power. I, I'm wondering, like, he's been in some bad positions that are very fatiguing. You know, he's been having Collins riding his head a lot in this fight, in that front headlock, you know, having his back taken. Like, I, I'm wondering, how much power does he still have? Oh, he's still got power. He's still got power. Oh, yeah. You can tell just how much because the, how keen Collins is to close that distance, to take that power away. Oh, a nice short elbow on the inside from Collins. Uh, anytime you have a guy who's powerful, you don't want to give him space to generate power. Smother him. You either stay far enough away you can't get hit, or so close that he can't hit you hard. Collins doing a good job here of just keeping Raja Jackson against the cage. What's the keys for Raja to get out of this space here, Frank? Well, he needs to get some kind of frame in front of him. Right now, he's just a 50-50 lock. If he wants to create space, instead of locking up in the 50-50 with his shoulder, he can bring that hand and almost swim it down and create as a, a frame across the face. Uh, create space. That'll give him the ability to throw punches where he's shown the most danger. He's, it's almost like he's doing two things. He's locking up like a wrestler, but he wants to throw down like a boxer. It's like those are kind of contradicting each other, not making it very easy. Like, again, see how he brings his hand in? He's bringing his shoulder. Wrestling, yes, but if he brings his hand across the throat, he could do a frame. You see a tie boxing all the time. That'll give him the space to maybe fire some shots, create some opportunities, because right now, shoulder to shoulder, and he keeps giving up those front headlocks. It's, this has definitely been an area where Collins has shown much more success. Oh, and now they separate, though. Two minutes, 15 seconds. Tip it. Oh, that tip seemed to dig into the body there, Frank. That yeah, body oh. shot hurt. And again, you can tell Collins knows that hurt. Oh, big takedown as well. Oh, he's stepping into the mount. Wow. Big shots coming down. The referee's already on top of this one. Giving up his back once again. Rajas rolled out now trying to get back to his feet. Wow. Oh, and another again, one. Again, again. Steve, keep throwing. Steve, keep throwing. Take down. Take down. What great offense from Collins, man. Great versatility and just, just showing how well rounded he is. Mean, he's got weapons from everywhere from the clinch, throwing the strikes, changing levels, attacking with offense for grappling. Okay, Here again, the double. I mean, there he landed a phenomenal roundhouse to the body, right? Went back to it for a second time. A lot of guys would have went back to that well for a third time, and that's when all of a sudden you become predictable, maybe eat a bad shot. But instead, he goes, hey, I know, let me, let me be unpredictable. He took a double, and now he's definitely on the, you know, this fight, as long as something crazy doesn't go on, he's won it. Roger Jackson did so well to get out of that mounted, the, the, the mount from Collins. But now he's got more pressure, 45 seconds. Back pressure that left knee! Yeah, he's back flat on his back in the half guard position. Half a mount, basically, is what he's given right up. up the middle. And right because up of that... Go to the front head. Steve, just control. Steve, that's great control. offense for that. He's doing great. Keep doing control. Control. His corner's Attack. smart, to telling him, hey, control. Attack. Basically, Attack. don't make a mistake. So he redug that underhook hey, instead of reaching over the top for the old guillotine, which could give up maybe an underhook for Roger to start some offense. Oh, he's... This guy, T... 
Cross yes. the hands, be heavy with the shoulder. Oh, he's trying to work for the head now, Raj. Right? That makes the this. space. That's good his work. corner. Did not wow. want to happen. Stay away. Jackson moving forward. He knows he's chasing this fight. Oh, trying to make something happen. The final seconds. Here we go. There we have it. Three rounds in the books. Listen, Raja Jackson showed some excellent heart, but good technique, good versatility. And a very happy man on top of the cage there, Frank. Yeah. He knew that this was at his party. He spoiled it. Now he's the, now people talking about him on Monday. Super happy. Stephen Collins, Raja Jackson going back to his corner. Now listen, there's that phrase, Frank, and it's one that people don't like to hear, especially when they might be coming off a loss, but win and learn, right? They've seen some holes there, but what they've also learned is Raja is tough as hell. He showed composure in bad positions. He got out of some really bad spots. And on the flip side, you saw Collins rise to this occasion just like he said he would. Absolutely. He didn't show any quitting. I mean, on that, not hard to be on that side of a fight. You're losing. to keep fighting back, not to give up. To still look. And even when they broke off in the last 10 seconds, he moved forward looking for a finish to turn it around in some way. But tonight, he just fell short. And now, we'll have a little look through. Rounds one through three at that action. Here we go. Kicked off with this. Big left hook. Oh, there you go. That's the one that dropped him early in round one. But look at the recovery, the awareness. Oh, short shots up against the cage here. This was the pressure that Collins was able to bring. Then we move into round two. This became a familiar position. That snap down position from him and then taking the back, jumping up here. Look at the speed, the versatility. And then round number three, here we go. Oh. This was the takedown and straight into mount. Watch how he steps over this. Raja did exactly what he needs to do. Good awareness. Used that cage. Wall walked. Turned himself out. Got back to his feet. Stopped what was a finishing position. I think we're, I think we're set and ready now for the announcement. Let's bring the one and only Michael Vale inside the cage. Here he is now. So let's hand it to him. Hand it to Michael Vale. Ladies and gentlemen, three rounds of action. We go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Brad Frank scores about 29 28. Judge Eric Curseal scores about 29 28. And Judge Greta Cox scores about 30 to 27. For your winner by unanimous decision, Stephen Collins! Stephen Collins victorious there, making his professional debut. Great job tonight. You showed a lot of versatility in there. How does it feel coming in here? You knew you were the underdog. You knew that everybody was looking at Raja, obviously who his father was. Did that add any pressure or give you motivation? Man, I had pressure the whole camp, bro. Like, it was times where I sat in my room and I broke down because I know it's going to be a tough fight. And I know I'm coming to a town where he's more popular than me. But I had to keep my man focused, listen to my coaches. And just keep practicing every day, bro. Just keep practicing every day. And you're going to prove yourself over and over again that you're good enough. And obviously, you're in cardio. This wasn't a fight you've had. You didn't have a 12-week camp. You took this fight on about two weeks' notice. How do you feel that your lifestyle attributes to that? So, actually, I had a fight on CFFC that fell out. And then the matchmakers contacted you guys, matchmakers, and made the match happen. And I just kept my tram going. Also, I got a guy in a G2, my gym, named Jake. He been helping us run ever since, like, ever since my last three fights. We just been running and running and running. So I knew I was prepared to go all three rounds. Hey, bro, I think. Um, I want to thank my family. I want to thank everybody at the class UFC gym and Munster watching. I want to thank everybody at TF North High School, South Suburban High School, the whole G2 family, everybody that's here with me. I love everybody. Thank you. Your winner, Stephen Collins. <laughs>